and Sarah Watt. And on behalf of the research team and co-authors, today I'll be discussing findings from a qualitative analysis of Smart Sex Resource Anonymous Online Sexual Health Information Chat Transcripts. Evidence suggests that there is a high prevalence of anxiety among sexual health service users, but little is known about anxiety in online sexual health settings. Additionally, sexual minorities, including gay, bisexual, queer, and other men who have sex with men, experience higher rates of anxiety compared with heterosexual populations. Low barrier anonymous online sexual health services, as well as accessible sexual health information, can help to facilitate access to services, particularly among those facing stigma and marginalization. Online services may also provide opportunities to connect users with appropriate mental health supports. However, little is known about expressions of anxiety, user experiences of anxiety, or provider responses to anxiety in online sexual health settings. Smart Sex Resource is a sexual health website run by the BC Center for Disease Control, which provides sexual health education, support, and resources, both to the general public and to sexual health service providers. Website visitors can also access sexual health information and support through an anonymous chat feature, which is staffed by sexual health nurses. Nurses respond to a wide range of questions regarding sexual and reproductive health. These include, for example, questions regarding sexual health service access, STI testing, diagnosis and treatment, and safer sex methods. We use transcripts drawn from the Smart Sex Resource chat service to characterize expressions of anxiety among chat users and nurse responses to expressed anxiety among chat users. We used inductive thematic analysis to analyze 48 transcripts detailing chat conversations between clients and sexual health nurses. Transcripts containing conversations about worry or anxiety were identified using a keyword search. Among anxious chat users, HIV transmission risk, symptoms, and test accuracy were common topics of concern. This was often in the absence of any notable nurse assessed risk. In some instances, anxious chat users appeared to use the information provided by nurses to prepare themselves for their next steps. In other words, uh, the information and assurance that was provided by nurses seemed to increase chat users' comfort and encourage them to seek appropriate sexual health services. For example, when fear of receiving a positive STI test result acted as a deterrent from necessary testing. In other instances, however, Concerns were unresolved by sexual health education or testing interventions. Chat users repeatedly expressed the same or similar concerns either within the same chat or they visited the chat multiple times to ask the same or similar questions. These chat users were uh, in some cases already connected with sexual health services or had undergone STI testing with negative results. We can see that in this first example here where the chat user says, my tests were negative, but I'm sure it's HIV. Could the tests be wrong? This was not uncommon among highly anxious chat users who frequently struggled to accept or to believe test results or to accept information that was provided by nurses about um, STI risk levels. In this context, elements of shame and stigma shaped perceptions of risk. And we can see again in the second example, I can't believe I was so stupid. This was a huge mistake, the chat user says. Expressions of shame, self-blame, regret were fairly common, particularly among chat users who described stigmatized sexual experiences, behaviors, or relationships, including, for example, sex with sex workers, sex outside of existing relationships, or novel sexual experiences. These chat users often expressed shame, self-blame, and an exaggerated appraisal of their own risk, most typically in relation to HIV acquisition. These misperceptions were enduring. They were not easily corrected by information or education. Nurses often recognized and acknowledged persistent anxiety among chat users. They attempted to normalize experiences of anxiety and stigma. And we can see uh, in this example at the bottom here where the nurse says, Sometimes when people have new sexual experiences, it feels riskier, even if it's not. Was this a new experience for you? This strategy was often used by nurses to 
redirect the conversation to address chat users' feelings of, of stigma, of shame, and of anxiety. What we have here is a simplified composite of examples which help to demonstrate a common pattern of conversation between highly anxious chat users and chat nurses. Here, the chat user, in green, is concerned about HIV acquisition following a low-risk sexual experience. This person is already connected to sexual health services and describes experiencing persistent anxiety despite negative STI test results. It was not uncommon for chat users to struggle to accept sexual health information or test results when they were experiencing very high levels of anxiety. Now, nurses often attempted to redirect conversations to address chat users' feelings of anxiety. For example, here, the nurse says, sometimes when people are feeling or really worried about their sexual health, it can be hard for them to trust their test results. Is this something that you've been that has been causing you stress for a while. This type of inquiry helps to facilitate conversations regarding chat users' feelings and experiences. However, we can see here the chat user asks, can I come back again tomorrow? As I mentioned earlier, in some cases, chat users' concerns weren't resolved by sexual health interventions or education. These chat users appeared to visit the chat in search of reassurance and temporary relief from anxiety. This suggests that alternate supports may be appropriate for these chat users. Sexual health anxiety was a source of pronounced distress among some online sexual health service users. Persistent anxiety about HIV and other sexual health issues suggests a need for targeted mental health interventions addressing HIV-related stigma and anxiety. A scarcity of known and reliable referral options constrained nurses' ability to efficiently and effectively address the needs of persistently anxious clients. Appropriate and effective interventions, including improved referral options for anxiety among people seeking sexual health services are needed to facilitate mental health service access, particularly among those facing barriers to care. In response to Findings from this study, our team has created a resource to support providers in recognizing and responding to sexual health anxiety among service users. We're currently gathering and integrating feedback on this resource from a range of sexual health service providers. Building on this, qualitative interviews exploring experiences of anxiety are currently being conducted with sexual health service users. Based on findings, Guidance will be tailored to address experiences of sexual health anxiety among GBQT2 people who are accessing sexual health services. However, more evidence is needed to identify a range of effective interventions for anxiety among sexual health service users. Thank you very much for your time, and I would also like to thank the research team and co-authors who worked on this project, as well as our funders for this project. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me.